Part of my collection of stuff that I don't know why I save is different chunks of vintage central vacuum systems over the years. So I thought I'd make a video of the different piping materials that have been used uh, throughout uh, the years to install built-in vacuum systems. And we're kind of going from earliest on onward uh, to the right here. And the earliest materials used were cast iron, threaded pipe, and recessed hub drainage fittings. This is a section from a 1914 Spencer system here. Um, this is a uh, recessed hub TY fitting. And you can see that it looks different from your regular uh, like gas line fittings or boiler fittings if you have hot water heating. The hubs are larger to accommodate the pipe being screwed in and still leave the inside wall of the pipe flush with the inside wall of the fitting. Uh, these are huge and heavy and difficult to work with and so tremendously labor intensive, but that was the only thing that was available. I mean, this thing has to weigh, that's probably a better part of 20 pounds right there. And this is one fitting. And if you think about the way this were assembled, you had to, you know, thread this onto this, then you had to thread one pipe in, or the, the valve in this case. Then you had to thread the other pipe in. Then you had to thread the next elbow on top of that. So you can't start from the inlets and work back towards the unit the way we usually do today. You had to start from where the unit was going to be and build out toward the ends of the system. Uh, on this example, this was screwed into the, the separator on the Spencer machine. And then they had this, which was once flexible, not so much anymore, uh, between the pipe here, which you can see does not have threads cut on the end, and the pipe going out to the inlets in the house, just to give a little bit of flexibility, because these, there's, there's no, uh, no tolerance, no give, there's, they're solid as hell. And they had to be supported with big heavy hangers and riser clamps and everything, uh, just because the weight was so tremendous. So this was part of what made the early 1910s and 20s systems so expensive and not found in houses besides mansions, usually. Starting in the 19, I would say, 40s, definitely by the 50s, we started to see tubular uh, thin wall steel tubing. And now instead of being pipe, which is measured by the inside diameter, it's tube, which is measured by the outside diameter. So... This in here is two inches. This out here is also two inches. And so you could take one of these and fit it right in there. But uh, this two inch OD became the standard. And I believe HP VacuFlow was one of the first to um, have the bending equipment to take solid, um, you know, straight steel tubing, expand the ends to accept uh, a tube bend to make fittings like this 90 and this 45 here. Uh, and then of course cut and weld to make junctions like a Y or a T. And uh, oftentimes these were glued together with an adhesive at the joints. The other way to assemble them mo more commonly seen today in commercial systems that are installed with steel tubing are shrink sleeves. So you put this on here and you put this wherever it's going to go and you slide the shrink sleeve down and then you heat it up. And then that shrink sleeve, of course, it's, it's just heat shrink tubing, big, huge heat shrink tubing, shrinks down and glues this together. Of course, it's still a little soft and pliable until it, until it uh, uh, cools down again, but you don't get that instant strong bond that we're used to getting with PVC. It's, it's kind of an interesting experience. Uh, I came across in the last year for the first time a cast aluminum 90 degree elbow. This was on a vintage vacuum aid system and it's the same two inch standard uh, but it's cast made of aluminum and it's got a, a slight recess inside for the for the tube but um, I don't know if this company just you know they say when all you have is a hammer everything looks like a nail well, if they didn't have the bending equipment, but they had the facility to cast parts, well, they just made them out of, of cast aluminum. Starting in the late 50s, early 60s, we started to see plastic pipe. 
and one of the early manufacturers was Sloan Manufacturing in Sun Valley, California. These are Sloan fittings. You'll notice they're black, they're ABS, and um, you'll also notice how big and chunky they are. The, uh, the hubs are deep, the fittings themselves are, are good and heavy. Uh, I mean heavy, but not, they're, they're nothing compared to this stuff over here, the metal. Um, and uh, this is made of ABS, not PVC. ABS was oftentimes and is still oftentimes used for plumbing drainage pipe. And some early central vacs were installed with ABS pipe. Um, you can also see just how much bigger the pattern is on like this 45 compared to a modern one, which is which is this, this size here. Um, this actually has a little bit of a radius to it. This is a really tight, tight turn. But... Um, so we've got some ABS stuff here. This is all Sloan manufacturing, it says. VCF, they were all, they all use this uh, VC250, that's a 45. They had 30 degree elbows too. Um, Sloan then started to make PVC fittings and they made them gray, gray plastic. You can see this is the same pattern as the short 90 there. And that's a big old short 90 compared to a more modern sized one. Um, another interesting thing is, here's two newer 45s. Uh, they became, instead of Sloan Manufacturing in Sun Valley, they became GSR. Which I guess is G&R Sloan. Maybe two brothers owned it or something. But all the gray stuff is PVC. Uh, oftentimes you get some pretty poor joints, uh, solvent joints in these old systems, especially when they tried to use PVC into an ABS fitting. They don't quite meet up and weld together like PVC to PVC does. Uh, here's another manufacturer, SureStop. You can see uh, SureStop there. I've got a section of this ABS. So this is all the same size as the, the modern stuff. Um, kind of brittle and these are some interesting fittings. You also sometimes see fittings made of styrene rather than PVC and these are your really lightweight um, you know, there's there's nothing to them. I saw a Filtex system I've seen a few Filtex systems installed with these in the real late 60s and um, I saw one that was installed with straight T's everywhere. The T's didn't have a sweep to them uh gsr sloan eventually introduced uh some cheaper lighter weight fittings and these are referred to in the um the vacuum made brochure as being builder's weight fittings so uh you can see the difference like uh just in the the thickness of the walls this is the their their heavier weight fitting and then this is the one of their lighter weight T fittings. You can see there's barely any sweep to the T at all. This one actually came from a company called Flow in Burbank, California. But it's a sweep T without as much of a sweep to it. Newtone loved these. Newtone systems were always installed with these and the little medium sweep 90s. And but, you know, who cares? It's a Newtone. Even if it's installed well, things not going to work. But um, so they they started cheapening things and. Uh, and making some cost cuts and uh, one interesting thing here's a here's a GSR Y fitting this is a 70s any of these fittings that say GSR they're 70s and uh, here's a Vaculine Y fitting that mold looks pretty darn close it's not exactly the same mold but uh, Vaculine started in the 80s in Canada early 80s I believe um, there were some manufacturers notably Kenmore that uh, advocated just using flex hose and cutting off a piece of flex for every turn in the system. And that would seem to be very convenient and uh, easy on the do-it-yourself installer. But the problem is, well, three problems. First of all, this stuff comes apart over time. I have to go fix an early Kenmore system where the Flex 90 came apart inside of a, um, a chase. And so now they have a leak that affects the whole system. But there's that. Uh, there's the fact that this there's no hub to this. There's no recess for the pipe to sit. So you have a ridge uh, at the the in, in 
outlet and a ridge at the outlet and you get clogs. And the third thing is the inside walls themselves of this are really corrugated. They're really terrible for airflow. And when a system is installed with a whole bunch of this stuff, it really adds up. There's an old ABS cap. It's a GSR fitting. And uh, so this is all two inch uh, thin wall that we've been talking about. But some manufacturers uh, came up with their own size, their own standard. They didn't just go with the, the size that was out there. Um, notably Kenmore. And here's a Kenmore uh, inlet. And they had a pretty cool mounting plate because uh, one plate went in front of the drywall, one plate went behind the drywall and it sandwiched it. And then they had the flange 90 here. So you would screw this stuff all together. Kenmore systems were almost exclusively retrofitted. I don't think I've ever seen a new construction Kenmore installed because you just went to Sears and bought it and you put it in your house. It wasn't sold through contractors or builders or anything like that. Um, here's a Kenmore 90. So this is one and three quarter inch uh, OD instead of two inch OD. Um, nice, uh, nice long radius on the 90, nice deep hubs. But again, many of the systems that should have been installed with this were instead installed with flex hose because Kenmore uh, represented that it was an acceptable way to install it. Here's a vacuum flow uh, section of pipe. HP started out using two inch uh, steel and then they developed their own size plastic pipe, inch and 13 sixteenths, I believe, which they used all the way up till the mid 80s and then they went back to two inch thin wall PVC. But um, VacuFlow did a nice job with their system. You get more friction loss with the thinner pipe sizes or the, the smaller diameter pipe sizes, but you get higher velocity, which can help you, um, you know, like when, when the inlet is at the base of a riser and you're lifting the dirt up, uh, the dirt will go up more readily in one of these than it will in a larger pipe. Uh, and it's also easier to retrofit. Uh, you know, this is just that much easier to snake through walls that already have stuff in them than bigger pipe. Another cool thing, this is the VacuFlow Adapter 90, and you can see it fits inside the tube. And the idea was that you already had the pipe sitting inside the wall for you. I mean, you would feed it up or down into the wall, and then you could put glue on the outside of this and just stick it in there with your fingers and glue it in. Um, a little easier than trying to reach in the wall and put glue on the pipe, uh, like we have to. Of course, there's other ways of doing that, too. Um, Here's a Black & Decker. This is a, like a two-story riser, you could see. Black & Decker, Black & Decker was unique. They did not have a mounting plate that you would attach to the side of a stud like everybody else did. With Black & Decker, you would stick a riser clamp on the bottom stud plate of the wall. This would hold the pipe where you wanted it. And there was a little clip that went around the 90-degree elbow that would hold it at the face of the drywall after the drywall was completed. And your wall inlet itself, you would just attach to the wall using toggles or other wall anchors. And uh, this is actually a larger size than your modern inlets, so it is possible to put modern inlets on Black & Decker pipe, even though the pipe itself is smaller. And again, um, adapter elbow fits inside the pipe. And here on, you know, this would be a second floor coming down through into a first floor. This is a three-way T. And one interesting thing is to see how they necked it down a little bit. I don't know how easily that shows up in there. But I think the idea with that slight reduction in size at this part was to keep debris traveling downward from making its way and sitting behind the inlet, which is something that you see every time an upper inlet flows down through a straight through an inlet below it. But anyway, Black & Decker pipe, 60s. Uh, here's here's Vacuumade's uh, adapter elbow. This is the only modern manufacturer, to my knowledge, that gives you an adapter elbow that fits inside the, the tube. And uh, so they, they make this fitting themselves. And it's interesting how close that sits to the to the face of the interface of the drywall and what a sharp radius that is on the one hand it's restrictive but uh, to the airflow but on the other hand it's also restrictive to the debris so you'd have a really hard time getting anything big past this elbow and um 
So they have the plate, they have the, uh, the ring that includes the O-ring, and you cement that into your adapter elbow, and that holds the whole thing together. Kind of a handful, though, especially to retrofit. I don't think I'd want to do retrofits with this setup. Uh, Beam, later uh, Plastiflex, came up with uh, the ABC system of fittings. You'll see a lot of beams from the 1980s that there are no 90-degree elbows. There's just a whole bunch of 45s glued together. There are no 90-degree Ts. There's only 45-degree Ys. And the idea was, instead of making a whole bunch of fittings that you had to stock, they would only make short 90s and 45s and street 45s and 45-degree Ys. And you would just, you know, to make this, you glue A plus B. To make this, you glue A plus B. C and they had this whole chart of how to make 90 degree T fittings and 90 degree elbows and kind of a neat setup. Um, nice, these 45s have a little bit more of a radius on them than the, you know, this is the more modern pattern that we still use today, even though GSR is long gone. This is the size of a modern 45. And um, you can see that that's kind of a tight turn. Interestingly, um, you know, in, in installation, typically we would use a 45 wherever we can instead of a 90, or like a 90 and a 45 instead of two 90s. But a, so this would, you know, it's oftentimes viewed as the superior fitting because it's a more gentle angle, but it is actually a sharper turn. I have seen instances where you have a, a long 90 behind the wall inlet, and debris like a, a pen, a marker, will make its way through that long 90 because it's not a short 90 there to stop objects like this and it goes until the first 45 in the system and that's where it gets caught. So something surprising that I learned. And uh, obviously you can see the PVC fittings of yesteryear were gray. Everything was a nice gray color. Today they're all beautiful white which looks great uh, for a little while and uh, starts to get kind of dirty as you use it just because of the static electricity attracting the dust to the pipe and, and the installer's dirty handprints on it. But um, today we have fittings by Vaculine and Canplast, Hayden, which actually all three are the same, and Plastiflex, but they all still use this standard two-inch size. We haven't changed from that. I just, uh, I think it's neat to see the evolution and I hope you enjoyed it also.